Space Age Polymers Meet the Music of Today. I've seen the future, and it's swinging. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe, and be sure to hit the like button to show appreciation for all the magic polymers that make up your everyday life. Now today, we're talking about the Legere Synthetic Reed. Now, before we dive into my thoughts and impressions, full disclosure, the nice people at Legere sent me a big box of tenor and alto reeds, signature and American cut, and a variety of strengths. So can that affect a person's evaluation of a product, getting a nice free goodie box? It certainly can. I've done my best to be objective, but I think it's important for you to know what's going on behind the scenes. Now, my policy is, if someone sends me a product and I like it, I will do a review. There's no cost, they don't have to give me money, they don't pay for production value. If I don't like it, then I send them very detailed feedback in ways to improve, but I don't post a review video. I'm not gonna do negative review videos, I just wanna talk about things I am excited and I think you should try. Now, when I do give the feedback to the products I don't like, I never hear back. But this is a product I do like, so let's talk about what this is. So, if you followed my channel for any amount of time, you know I love Cane reeds. I actually have two videos on conditioning, breaking in cane, rotating your cane reeds, and getting the most out of your cane reeds. I've always loved cane reeds. Well, in one of those review videos, I left a comment basically to finally shut some of you up that kept saying, try Legere, try Legere. Why are you dealing with cane reeds? Get some Legere reeds. And I was a little annoyed, if I'm honest. So I said, all right, I'll check out Legere reeds and I'll review them. Well, I got an email from Chris over at Legere, the uh, marketing manager, saying, hey, I noticed you haven't reviewed a Legere yet. And so I decided it was time to step up and make good on my word. Thanks a lot, YouTube comments. So they sent me some reads, the American and Signature Cut. The American is the newer cut. I'll give you a sound sample of those and the Signature. Now, all the sound samples we're dealing with today are just a quick first impression. I'm going to be going into the recording studio later in the summer. I'll talk about that in a minute to give you much more in-depth dry, nerdy comparison samples, but this is just a first impression of how they sound. Now, being a lover of cane reeds, I wasn't expecting very much, so when I opened the box, I normally play on a 3.5 cane reed for classical and jazz generally. Different cuts, we can talk about that later. So I pulled out a 3.5 and I felt very smug, thinking that like, yeah, these don't work very well, they're not that great. Well, to humor Legere, I tried the quarter strength now, the 3.25, and both the signature and the American cut, and then my mind was kind of blown because it played very, very similarly to my Kane Reed. And it sounded and felt annoyingly close. And it was kind of a revelation. It was like being told you were adopted in your 40s. It was something that you believed for a long time. And then you realize, oh, I was really wrong and I've been telling people the wrong thing and I've been ignoring my students who have been yammering on about Legere for a long time. So let me say for the record, I'm sorry, I was wrong. So how do they play? Well, those of you that already use Legere, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm kind of making this more as just me eating crow and maybe encouraging some of my music educator friends and teachers. There's a significant number of people that watch this channel that are woodwind players or brass players that watch and interact with me to learn how to teach their saxophone students better. There is some stigma out there, some music educators that say don't use Legere or they don't allow synthetic reeds in their classroom. Some synthetic reeds, I agree. I think you should reconsider Legere. I certainly am. So let's do a little listening to a cane reed, the signature cut, and then the American cut. And again, this is not a dry, sterile recording to tell of the tiny little miniature nuances in sound. We're gonna actually go into a professional recording studio with a professional recording engineer to do those differences in a couple of weeks because I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm not a sound engineer. I do okay recordings to get impressions but the nerdy little minute recordings with the good headphones and hearing the slight, that's gonna come a little bit later in the summer. But let's take a listen and see how they broadly compare to Kane, and then we'll check out the signature and then the American cut. <laughs>
And all those samples were recorded on my signature mouthpiece, the 56, made by Windy City Woodwinds. It is an FDM or 3D printed mouthpiece. They worked really well on that. I tried them on several of my jazz mouthpieces in the collection, a Daddario, a Meyer. They sounded equally good on those and generally worked on every mouthpiece I tried except one. And I will do a demonstration in the recording studio, but the Van Doren AL3, uh, they worked great on my classical Larry Teal and my C-Star. On the Van Doren AL3, a classical mouthpiece, it just didn't work. I don't know why, but when we go into the recording studio, I will give you a very clear comparison of how they sound. And that way my buddy Ben can actually tell me when I'm off and on access on the microphone to make sure everything is on the up and up when comparison sound samples. Now, after trying them and liking them, I reached out to Chris over at Legere. We had a nice long conversation about the research and development that has gone into these, how they addressed the thickness, the density, the stiffness, not only latitudinally, but longitudinally, longitudinally, but you know what I mean, balancing all the different axes of vibration and stiffness to make it resonate like a cane reed on your mouthpiece. And they've done a really knockout job. I also asked, because I'm a nervous fellow, about what it's made out of. It's polypropylene, and that is a BPA-safe material. It's the same kind of stuff that your yogurt comes in, and it is non-toxic and is food-grade. So if you trust your yogurt to sit in polypropylene, this is probably going to be safe on your mouth, which is important to me. So obviously, at this point, you can tell I'm a fan. I've been surprised. I've apologized to my students. So let's talk pros and cons, and more importantly, who this might be a good product for. The biggest pro and the game changer for me as an educator, not as a player, but as an educator, is they just work, so it removes a variable when teaching. And all my music teacher friends out there know exactly what I'm talking about. You have a student that the low note's not responding, they have a squeak or a chirp in the palm keys, and immediately you start diagnosing, and your little music educator brain like mine starts rattling through the different possibilities. This removes a big variable. Obviously, it's quite often the embouchure, a leak in the instrument, or any number of things, but very often it's the reed that's the issue. If the student has a legere, a good working synthetic reed, it can just take away that question off the table. As a matter of fact, I was dealing with a private student that was having an issue, and I said, do you have a legere you can pop on? They said, yes, it worked, the problem's gone. We eliminated that problem by taking out a variable. For a music educator, that is a very powerful tool to have on hand. Another big pro, they last longer than cane reeds. Now, you will want to rotate these so you don't run one into the ground, it becomes softer and softer. But I speak to my professional friends that play Legere and some Legere artists, and they told me quite honestly off the record that yes, they do last a long time. They do rotate them so they don't get softer, but they get softer way slower than a cane reed would. And they're guessing that their beginning students could play on these for six months, some even longer without issue. Longevity, big plus. Another big pro that is big for me where I live is they don't change with weather, humidity, astrological sign, barometric pressure. They stay very stable regardless of what's going on in the weather. And right now it's just become blazing hot where I live and the humidity has gone through the roof. Normally when I play cane reeds, that may mean my reeds change drastically. Maybe time to scooch them out and get some new cane reeds going in. These have not changed with the weather. It's a big deal where I live. Well, who are these for and who would I recommend these for? Well, if you're an adult student, I think you should very seriously look at these. Chances are you have a job, you have kids, many of you have grandkids and other activities you enjoy other than just playing the saxophone. If you've got 20 minutes to practice, like a lot of us do some days, just grabbing one of these and practicing, not fighting and fussing with reeds, is powerful. When I was in school or grad school, I had all the time in the world to adjust, maintain, condition reeds. Now I understand as a, an adult and a parent of two, Time is tough to come by. So being able to make your practice session more convenient, I totally get it. For adult and busy students, definitely something to look at. Now as a professional saxophonist, whatever that means, I will have these in my case at all times, honestly. The reason being, outdoor festivals and gigs, and I recently played a, well not recently, I guess it was 14 months ago, a chamber series where we play in a variety of settings, sometimes outside, a chamber music crawl, like a pub crawl. Um, the change from going indoors and outdoors, indoors and outdoors, wreaked havoc on my read throughout the afternoon. Uh, this would be something I would use without hesitation. Also, recording studio. Now, I'm not saying at this point I would definitely use this in a recording session over a cane read. 
What I am saying is I will have these on hand as a backup, no question. I might use these full time, I don't know yet. But as a backup, it's a no brainer. I've been in recording sessions where my reads change or I can't find a good read. It's really stressful when you're paying an hourly rate to a recording engineer and you've got your whole band waiting on you. Having this as an option that's 95 to 99% the sound of a cane read, that would relieve a lot of stress. So I'm always going to have these in my case. If I'm doing a big band rehearsal, which I don't, or sitting in a concert band, which I don't, I would definitely be using these as well as to not wear out my good cane reads, even if I were still doing cane reads primarily. They're a really powerful tool to have in your arsenal. So at this point, you're probably thinking, this sounds like an infomercial. What's Dr. Wally selling? Why is he so upbeat about these? What's he get out of it? Well, those of you that know me know that I get excited about cool products. That's excitement, not salesmanship. There's no affiliate link. I don't have a promo code. They've already sent me a bunch of reads free, no strings attached, and anything else I want from Legier, they've already generously offered me. I'm just excited what this means for me as an educator and as a performer, but we will explore more in detail in the coming weeks. Now, there are a few cons, let's be honest about. There's not many, but you should be aware. Now, the first big con you should be aware of is other people. Other people will have a bias against this. There are some educators and some performers that have a no synthetic policy, not my band class, not my band. Um, that's not gonna be easily overcome. I think that's going to change over time. And the problem is, Legere sometimes gets lumped in with some other not so great synthetic reads. I hope that changes. But there are a number of people that when you tell them you play Legere, they will immediately listen and start to hear, oh yeah, there's that plasticky sound. Could they tell in a blind test? I'm not so sure, but expectancy theory and bias confirmation will let them hear what they want to hear. There's no way you're gonna overcome that anytime real soon. I don't care, but you may care, and that's something to be aware of. There are people that will definitely turn their nose up at these, so be aware of that if you choose to play them, or just play them and don't tell anyone. Another con is the price per read. Notice I said not the overall cost, but the price per read, and here's why. You may save money in the long run, but if you've got a younger student playing these, one wrong move, taking a selfie, and you're out a not insignificant amount of money. If you break a cane read, that stinks. Break one of these, it's gonna sting more given the cost per read. So I don't have the answer yet as to whether or not how young of a student we should be using these with. Let me think about it for a while and I'll get back to you on that, but I'd also really like to know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're a music educator or a band director, please let me know. I'm honestly asking not to foster engagement. I generally want to know what you're doing with these reads. But the price per read, if you break them, that is a con. Now, one more con, not so much a con, but an area for improvement for Legere are the cases. And it's probably not what you think. Now, I've seen online some people complaining about the amount of plastic in each case. I'm not worried about that. I love the environment, but if you open up your refrigerator and look at that little you know, drawer on the inside of the door where you keep all your condiments, your ketchup, your mayonnaise, your mustard, your hot sauce, look at the amount of plastic in there and think how long that lasts. This is not a big deal. It is a clever design that holds the reed where you pop it in without ever endangering the tip. I like the case. So what's my issue? Well, if I'm doing classical and jazz, tenor and alto, I have a lot of these lying around the studio and at a quick glance, I can't tell what's what. I have to open them up and look at the read and it's not the easiest to read marketing, uh, marking the signature versus American cut and the strength when you've got old people eyes like me. So I would like to see the outside of the case marked or have a multi-case that works in these ways. Hopefully that will be on the horizon to make it easier. Now what you're thinking, Dr. Wally, if you were a smarter man, which I'm not, you would simply just take a piece of tape or a marker and mark the outside of the box. You can absolutely do that, but given how well thought out the product is, I think having some marking on the outside so you can quickly see what's in your case would be nice. So at this point in the video, I would say, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But being that it's a Legere, I don't have to. You're gonna let me know, I have no doubts. Now, music educator friends or people that have used these in band class, I really do wanna know your opinion so I can help formulate my ideas and recommendations of how and when I should or should not be recommending these, especially to younger students. So I genuinely want to hear your thoughts below. I will see you next week with some more educational goodness. We also have some more product reviews coming up. I got backlog. Some nice people have sent me some nice things that I do like that I wanna talk about. In the meantime, I hope you have a really wonderful week, but go practice.